One of those confusing terms that you find in medical papers is the hazard ratio. And I'm going to take you through the hazards of the hazard ratio with the help of these. In 2019, chili peppers made the headlines and all because of a hazard ratio. CNN said eating chilies cuts risk of death from heart attack and stroke. The Mirror, eating spicy food cuts your risk of early death by a quarter. While The Independent said that chili eaters have fewer deadly heart attacks, say scientists. These headlines all came from research published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology, who quoted a hazard ratio of 0.66. But what does this mean? A hazard ratio is a number that compares the rate at which an event happens in two different groups. In this study, the two groups were people who hardly ever ate chilies and those that were eating chilies more than four times a week. That's a lot of chili sauce. And they looked at 23,000 people over 10 years and compared the rate at which they had a heart attack or stroke and then died in those two different groups. So let's look at a plot. Here's a graph which along this axis shows the years for which the people have been followed up, up to 10 years. And along here, we see the total number of deaths from cardiovascular disease. But this has been scaled in proportion to the number of people in each group. And what we can plot is an image of the increasing number of heart attacks and strokes that led to the patient's death in the group that did not eat many chilies, and compare that with the increasing number of fatal heart attacks and strokes in the chili eating group. And what we can see is that this total is increasing at a slower rate in the chili eating group compared with the non-chili eating group. The rate at which these totals are increasing is known as the hazard. Slightly more technically, the hazard is the annual risk of dying from cardiovascular disease, although you could choose a different time period. So the hazard ratio is the hazard in the chili eating group divided by the hazard in the non-chili eating group, which in this study is estimated to be 0.66. Because that number is less than one, that means that fatal heart attacks and strokes were happening at a slower rate in the chili eating group compared with the non-chili eating group. Hazard ratios arise naturally from a statistical technique called survival analysis, which is used in any study where you followed people up for a long period of time to see whether they develop diseases or, or die or some other event. And this could be used in randomized trials of experimental drugs or in studies like this when you're trying to relate lifestyle with future events. The technical way in which hazard ratios are derived comes from what's known as Cox Proportional Hazards Regression Analysis, which is a very useful technique because it allows you to estimate hazard ratios while adjusting for other factors which might influence the risk. For example, in this Chile study, they adjusted for age, sex, energy intake, educational level, occupational class, smoking, leisure time, physical activity, cardiovascular disease, even consumption of garlic, parsley, and black pepper. But to know what hazard ratios mean, you don't really need to understand survival analysis and Cox regression. You just need to know that they're basically the ratio of the annual risk of an event happening in one group compared with the annual risk in another group. So, how do we communicate hazard ratios? Well, you could say that this 0.66 represents a 34% reduction in the annual risk of getting a heart attack or stroke. And 34% because that's just 1 minus 0.66. Yeah, but it's not very good. I mean, 34% reduction from what? If you want to tell a good, clear story, here's a better way. If we want to communicate what this hazard ratio of 0.66 really means to a wide audience, we have to share three things. First, how many fatal heart attacks and strokes actually occurred in each group? Second, over what time period? And third, how much chili were they actually consuming? Only by knowing these things can we get an idea of whether this research is actually important or not. What we're doing is essentially converting a hazard ratio 
to a difference in absolute risks. And we've got a tool, Real Risk, that will help you do this. There's a link in the description. Now, if you run this research through Real Risk, it'll tell you that out of 100 Italian adults in their mid-50s who never eat chili, we would expect around three to die of cardiovascular disease over 10 years. Whereas, out of 100 Italian adults in their mid-50s who eat chili more than four times a week, we would expect only two to die of CVD over 10 years. Those are the essential things you need to know. Another way of looking at it is that 100 people eating chilies more than four times a week experienced one fewer fatal heart attack or stroke over 10 years. And of course, we don't know it that it's the chili eating that led to that reduction in risk. It's just an association. Now, perhaps telling the story in this way won't lead to such dramatic headlines, but the truth rarely does.